This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're going to go through and start everything by going back to the fundamentals. Now, although this may not be the most exciting or interesting way to go through and start your P2 studies, I'm sure you'd all like to go through and get involved within the numbers that you see within your group accounts. It's fundamentally important that you have an understanding of this conceptual framework that the IISB presents in order to go through and ensure that, that you understand the essentials of how our accounting standards are put together, of how they are then developed. And that then goes through and helps you understand a little bit more about the accounting standards themselves and therefore their application within exam style questions. So you're very unlikely to go through and just have a particular question that goes through and specifically tests you on the conceptual framework. What we're going to try and do here is ensure that you have a knowledge of the framework to be able to help you develop ideas and to get a deeper, more thorough understanding of how these accounting standards work. Because if you can do that, then even if there is a really challenging scenario within a question, if you come back to the fundamental principles and the fundamental ideas, you give yourself a real good chance of being able to answer that question in sufficient detail to get yourself a pass. And that's all that you need to be able to do, isn't it? If you can pass each part of every question within the exam, you don't need to stress. You're going to pass the entire exam. OK, so uh, let's go through and first of all, have a look at why we have a conceptual framework. OK. Uh, so as it says there, that the framework provides the underlying rules, conventions and definitions that underpin the preparation of all financial statements prepared under IFRSs, which backs up what we've just said, isn't it? You know, if you have an understanding of this framework, then that will go through there and help you give a more thorough understanding of the accounting standards and therefore their application. OK, so what you've got there is that the framework provides the principles so if that's the case, that therefore goes through and ensures that every accounting standard that is developed is done so on a consistent basis, isn't it? So that each accounting standard, all those specific rules within the accounting standard use exactly the same fundamental principles. And therefore, if we know that we're using the same fundamental principles, we can go through there and be able to come to a judgment and an opinion on what those financial results are actually showing to us. So different user groups will come to the same conclusion. Likewise, the framework also goes through and helps you if no accounting standard exists. That's a very rare situation, uh, unlikely to appear within your exam. It's not as if there will not be an accounting standard and you have to go through and interpret the situation given within the question. However, it does mean if there is a particularly difficult aspect within an exam question, you can come back to the framework and the principles therein and use that to help you understand what is happening and answer the question posed to you. But if there was no standard that existed in real life, so maybe there was a, a very complex aspect of accounting, uh, then you would come back and try and apply the rules within this framework to ensure that you get an accounting rule or accounting principle that is consistent with everything else that has been gone previously. Uh, the key one, I suppose, from our current issues perspective, what you see in, in that final question within the exam is that it helps you improve existing standards. And I can't emphasise how important that is. When we come to your current issues part of the syllabus right at the very end, so once we've covered absolutely everything within the notes, uh, we need to begin to look at not just why the standards have been developed and how they've been developed but more importantly what is currently wrong with that standard and normally one of the issues that you have is is the the issue surrounding the standard is that they don't go through and follow as well as what they could these principles that are set out there within the framework so if we are to go through and try and improve them we need to know what the principles are within the framework so that we can then go through and address that issue and ensure that the newer, more up-to-date accounting standard follows the principles that we have here. So looking at the most recent accounting standards that we have, things such as IFRS 15 revenue has been adapted to go through and, if you like, 
improve the existing or previous standards that we had on revenue, being IS 18 and IS 11. Similarly, when we go through there and begin to look at financial instruments, which has been a huge project in, in recent history, uh, again, those standards were updated, they were improved to try and bring them up to date with the principles that we have within the framework. Also, I think we maybe touched upon it already. Uh, the reason why we have the framework is that it ensures that the information is useful to the users. So by that, meaning that people can understand the information that is presented to them and therefore they will then go through and make the same economic decisions. Uh, if we have information that is not useful, then we will have different user groups making different decisions, which will not go through there and help the stability of, of, of any economy, will it? And then finally, it helps prevent creative accounting. If people follow the principles and stick to the guidelines that were given, then there should be no possibility there of, of accountants and the preparers of the financial statements uh, introducing creative accounting techniques. If there are creative accounting techniques, then we run into all sorts of difficulties that we've seen with the likes of the WorldCom scandal and Enron scandals in recent history. Okay, so uh, that's just the reasons why we have the framework. What the framework then goes through and does is identify several different sections uh, of what the overall framework tries to do specifically. Uh, so first of all, what we go through and do there is we look at the objective of financial reporting. If we know what the objective of financial reporting is, then we can ensure that the framework is developed to ensure that those objectives are actually met. OK, so it says that the objective is to provide information that is useful to existing and potential investors, lenders and other creditors in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. What, what, what essentially does that mean? Uh, well. You know, if you're an investor, if you're a lender, if you're a, another creditor, you know, if you're an investor, you want to see profitability because that profitability will then ensure that you will get paid a dividend, won't it? Uh, your dividends can only be paid out of distributable profits. So the investors want to see that you are making profits so that they are then going to get a return with regards to the dividend. If you're a lender or you're an other creditor, then you want to ensure that there is enough cash within the business. So the business is cash generative so that those liabilities can be paid off. So essentially, that is the objective of what we're trying to do. We're trying to ensure that the investors are generating a return in terms of profitability so that they can then receive a dividend and that the lenders and the other creditors are going to get their amounts due to them. They are going to receive the cash and therefore those amounts due are going to be paid off. So we want to see a set of financial statements that goes through there and helps those investors, those lenders and creditors in making their decisions about whether or not they are prepared to invest further or whether or not they are prepared to go through there and provide more cash or grant more credit to the business. So the way in which that the framework goes through and looks at that is it talks about the economic resources of the entity. So thinking about the, the assets uh, and then it goes on and talks about the claims against the liabilities. So you're thinking there about the assets and you're thinking about the liabilities. So that's very much thinking, isn't it, about things from a statement, a financial position perspective. And essentially that's going through there, isn't it? And allowing the users of the accounts to think about, is it your liquidity in the short term? And then is it your solvency? in the long term. Don't worry, we're not going to have to do any analysis of financial statements like you've seen in F7 with regards to liquidity and current ratios and quick ratios and solvency, thinking about your gearing ratios. But what it's saying here is that the objective of the financial reporting is to make sure that we show the assets and we show that the liabilities there uh, are, if you like, as we'll see later, faithfully represented. OK, uh, and then it goes through and talks about the changes in the entity's economic resources and claims. Well, that's where we begin to go through there and start to look at your statement of profit or loss. We, we could incorporate your other comprehensive income, but, but let's not go through there and talk about that white elephant, shall we? OK, uh, let's leave it there about your statement of profit or loss, because as your revenues change, as your costs change, that goes through there, doesn't it? And then has an impact on how the value of your assets and how the value of your liabilities change or some. OK, and that's whereby the, 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 the framework goes through and starts to begin to bring in some other concepts. And that's whereby if you read deeper into the actual framework, that's where we begin to start to look at 
the preparation of that statement of profit or loss and the assumption there that that is always prepared on an accruals basis. So looking at when the transaction occurs as opposed to when the cash flows to or from the business. We then go through there and look at the main underlying assumption in the preparation of those financial statements, which ultimately is your going concern, isn't it? I don't think I need to add too much there in the fact that we know that going concern is thinking about your business operating for the foreseeable future. And that foreseeable future is thinking about the following year, isn't it? If the business isn't going to survive for the following year and we do not expect it to be around, then we will prepare the accounts on, on a different basis, which will be a breakup basis. But again, even at this P2 level, we're not really too concerned about preparing accounts on a breakup basis. We will always be preparing accounts and looking at accounting standards, dealing with the going concern principle. We then have what are referred to is it as the qualitative characteristics. So we have them just there. Uh, and the qualitative, if I can say it properly, always trips me up that the qualitative characteristics. Uh, these are very important, particularly as we go through and start looking at current issues later on, uh, because what you've got there is that you have the fundamental qualitative characteristics. So in order to make the information as useful to those users of the accounts as possible, so investors, lenders and your creditors, there are other user groups, but they're the the three that we'll primarily focus on now, uh, they need to ensure that the financial statements contain those fundamental qualitative characteristics and then they are supported by the enhancing qualitative characteristics. Again, I don't think there's too much that I need to go through is there an ad from those glory days of F7. But when we go through there and begin to look at current issues and issues that we have from the days of our old accounting standards, we need to ensure that those old accounting standards possess this qualitative characteristics. If they don't, then we need to go through there and begin to try and update the accounting standard, don't we? So the essential things are is that the, the users of the accounts want to ensure that the information is relevant, isn't it? Uh, so something is relevant if it is of use, if it makes a difference to the decisions made, okay? Uh, and something will make a difference, won't it, if it's material. So if something is large, then we need to do something about it. If something is not so large, then we can essentially ignore it, can't we? If it's immaterial, we don't need to concern ourselves with it. Don't forget as well, uh, we're not just thinking about materiality by size. We also think about materiality, don't we? Uh, but by nature. So any directors, transactions, directors, emoluments. Uh, they are their material by nature, aren't they? So therefore, uh, they will need to be useful to, to the user of the accounts. Uh, when we're going through there and looking at the other fundamental qualitative characteristic thing, that's the, the more, if you like, imperative of the two, the most important, because that's where we bring about substance. In order for something to be faithfully represented, then we need to go through there, don't we, and prepare the financial statements on the basis of substance over legal form, don't we? So when we start to begin to look at group accounts, we need to go through there, don't we? And begin to look at the substance of the transactions opposed to the legal form. When we begin to look at financial instruments like you've seen already in F2, oh, sorry, F2, uh, when we've gone through and looked at financial instruments in F7, I should say, uh, when we look at convertible instruments again, uh, we need to go through there and account for them based upon the substance as opposed to the legal form. So in order for something to be faithfully represented, we need to count for it based upon its substance, don't we? OK. And then those enhancing qualitative characteristics, comparability, verifiability, timeliness and understandability. We've seen those all before, isn't it? So comparability is not just thinking about year on year. We're also thinking about entity on entity in order to be able to go through there and help the users of the accounts. Yeah, we want to make sure that they can make a decision based upon what happened last year and this year, but also what one business has done compared to what an other business has done. Because again, if you're an investor, you need to be able to make a decision about whether or not you want to invest in company A or, or company B. And, and you couldn't if they those financial statements were not comparable. Uh, verifiability uh, is ensuring there that, that we have backup documentation uh, to, to verify, if you like, the numbers that are reported. So going back to source documentation, whether that's cash books, bank statements, invoices, good receipts, notes, etc. 
Uh, timeliness, the, the important aspect about timeliness as opposed to thinking about your evaluation model, isn't it, of property, plant and equipment. Uh, the, the most reliable, if you like, value of your property, plant and equipment, if you're thinking about the revaluation model, is when we go through there and, and ultimately sell the property, isn't it? That will give you the, the fair value of the property. But we can't wait, can we, to get that most accurate, up-to-date fair value. So something has to be done to ensure that that fair value is recorded in a timely manner. And ultimately, that's why when we look at revaluing property under IS16, it needs to be done by an independent expert because they will give us, if you like, a faithful representation, a faithful value, because it will be free from error. It, it, it will be neutral. There will be no bias within it. Uh, and also, if you like, why we've developed IFRS 13 to do with our fair value measurement, because that will ensure there that if we look at the rules within the standard, it goes through there and gives us a timely value to apply to that asset or that liability. The final one that you have there, your enhancing qualitative characteristics is understandability. And essentially all that goes through and says there is says, well, we're not allowed to go through and omit something from the financial statements because it's too complex. That would be great, wouldn't it? Because we can neglect everything to do with the world of financial instruments because that's really complex. Uh, but what we have to do is we have to incorporate everything within the account, regardless of the complexity. And we need to ensure, therefore, that we help the users that have a reasonable knowledge of the business and the activities that are presented by, by helping them, if you like, with, with the disclosure. And by the more disclosure that we present, the more understandable that that, that then becomes. So when we begin to think about the disclosure standards, of which there have been many in recent years, so IFRS 7, financial instruments disclosure, IFRS 8, looking at your operating segments disclosure, that helps the use of the accounts with a little bit more understandability of the business and its activities. OK, so it's important that we begin to think about the accounting standards as we go and work through them and how they can apply and, and tie back into the framework. OK, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll just leave it there for now. We'll, we'll, we'll go through and start up a new video in a second. But I just want to make sure that you spend a little bit of time before we start up again, just going back into the, the study text that, that, that you're using to go through and, and work with through P2 to just do a little bit of background reading about the qualitative characteristics and the underlying assumption being going concern and thinking about the objective of financial reporting. Because if you do, you can then begin to look at the next video where we start to look at the elements of the financial statement, the, the recognition criteria, and then begin to look at the concepts, is it there, of capital maintenance. So just spend 10, 15 minutes or so working through what we've already covered so far, and then we'll rejoin you there in a wee while.